this? Because there's something that happens that challenges our faith. Yes. I'm telling you, the enemy can get you out of faith. He can take your victory from you. Yes. Because the Bible says this is the victory yes. that overcomes the world, even our faith. faith. Come on, say faith is the victory. Faith is the victory. Somebody say, I don't care what's going on. I don't care what's going on. I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. Come on, I believe God. Thank you. 
that you would disrupt our peace, God. It will not disrupt your presence, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, we say yes to your will. We say yes to your way. We obey you this morning. God, we thank you for being our Savior. We thank you for saving us as a time such as this, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. of our warfare not yes, 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 yes. but they're mighty through God yes. from the pulling down of strongholds yes. casting down imagination oh. and every high thing that exalts yes. itself yes. against the knowledge of God bringing every thought into captivity yes. unto the obedience of Christ yes. we thank you right now we're not warring against each other yes. but the unknown the enemy himself yes. so we thank you God for chilling us together yes. for bringing us together oh God in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. For your mighty word that's gonna come forth on today, your word that's gonna cause healing and deliverance yeah. in the lives of your people. Ooh. And God, we ask for all these blessings in your name. And all God's people say, Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you.
may not be feeling our best, but we're alive. Yeah. We can tell God for it. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody ain't looking to clap their hands. Yeah. Everybody ain't looking to clap their hands. I work in a group home, and it's a lady. Nothing for her, but we don't do it for her. It can't be done. Jesus. So see, that's why I'm so thankful. That's why my praise is so radical. Cause see, I be around these people day in, day out, day in, day out. And some of y'all nurses, y'all do the same thing day in, day out. And just to see what she can't do, and I'm able to do it. I tell God, thank you. Y'all know it. Y'all see it. Hallelujah. That's why I can't sit down with God. I'm going to give him my praise because I can't get it to him no more. I'm going to raise my hand until I can't raise him no more. I'm going to stop my feet and shout for God till I can't do it no more. And that's what I'm going to do. Those are my choice. Because I know what he has.
church said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to get your Bibles, and this morning we're going to take a little slight detour. I sent you some notes earlier in the week. I think I did. Yes. Hallelujah. Because the Lord gave me a detour in the middle of the week. He says he's going to continue to teach on cultivating your cultivating the presence of the Holy Spirit. He says, but this morning I want to take a turn. I mean, sometimes the Lord will throw a curve. And we have to be sensitive to him whenever he throws those curves. Because sometimes when God gives you need to it's because there's something either taking place in the house or there's something about to take place. So I want you to understand that when God gives you a word, when God gives you an inclination, when God gives you an impression, a spiritual impression, it is either based on something that is presently taking place or something that's getting ready to take place. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Now, the scripture teaches us that we ought to be discerning, we ought to be watchful, because we do have an adversary. We get your name and say, I'm not your enemy. I'm not your enemy. Somebody has said, and rightfully so, it's not dangerous to have an enemy, it's just dangerous when you don't know who he is. Because all of us have things that's working against us. Please yeah. understand that. The Bible says when things happen in life, don't act like something strange going on. The scripture says, think it not strange concerning the trials that are trying you. you got a devil operating. He don't want you to get where God wants to take you. Are you listening to me? So whenever you start trying to do things, when you start trying to go toward the direction of God in your life, the enemy is going to fight you. And the sooner we all realize that, the better off we're going to be. There's something trying to keep you from getting to your destination. And if you don't recognize, here's, here's the problem. The problem is if we don't recognize who, in, who the enemy is, we'll start fighting each other. Amen. If you don't recognize who the enemy really is, yeah, the right. enemy will, he will cause you to start turning your focus on one another. Come on here, y'all. Yeah. Hallelujah. You think you mad at her, but it really ain't her. Amen. I can't get no help here at all. You think you mad about him, you think you mad at him, but it really ain't him. Yeah. It's simply an enemy who has who has misdirected or redirected your focus. Now, I told you part of my assignment as your pastor is to help you find and keep your righteous mind. Because there's something, there's something working. There's a, there's a diabolical force that is working against you, the righteousness aspects of your mind. The enemy wants you to act, he wants you to really operate, he wants, you to, he wants us to operate like somebody that's insane. Because there is an insanity to sin, you know. Yeah. You know why come out of this insanity? Y'all might as well wake up because you ain't gonna, you ain't gonna distract me. Hallelujah. <laughs> I know you like me. We sat up too late watching football. I did. I sat up watching the whole game. I ain't got a fingernail left. <laughs> My wife, she was trying. I, I think I know. I know. I know. I kept her woke up down there screaming at the TV. No, but y'all. I, mean, I, I, I get pretty excited when I watch football. I get, I get, I get rather animated. Yeah. A couple of times I thought I was going to have to throw my shoe at the team. <laughs> a, few time, a few times I thought I was going to have to get, up, you know, get in there and just kind of get on the line and help block, help do something. Yeah. But that, that my boy just couldn't get it together. But that time at the end, at the end of the game, I said, it wasn't pretty, but a W yeah. is a W. Yeah. Yeah. It sure wasn't a pretty man. Oh, but sometimes it takes a challenge Amen. in your life so that you can reassess yourself. Yes. Sometimes if you're not careful, there, there is a thing called overconfidence, you know. Right. You can have an, an, an elevator because, you know, they probably thought they're just going to go in there and just drag them cats up and down the field. Huh. That's probably what they thought. Yeah. But the cats had another idea. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Bible tells us don't think too high of ourselves. Amen. But, but we do, but we must think properly of ourselves. And I want you to understand that again. I want to reiterate one more time. I want you to hear me now that there's an enemy who's after your destiny. Yes. He's not fighting you over where you are. He's fighting you over where you're going. He don't want you to get to that place called there because, listen, listen to this, man. The closer you reach your destiny, the bigger threat you become to him. Because God's destiny in your life, ultimately, the destiny of God, once we begin to perform, and once we begin to operate in God's destiny, our destiny will put the devil out of business. Amen. Don't I hear me yet? Hallelujah. So he wants, he wants you to get stagnant. He wants you to get stuck. 
Hallelujah. He wants you to say, Quinn and I was walking through Lowe's yesterday looking at some stuff. And we ran into one sister that we, we stopped in the, in, 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 the, in, the, in the middle of an aisle. And we almost had a little church service, right? They didn't have a small church service. Hallelujah. And she said, and, and this is what she said. She said, Pastor, I tell you, sometimes I think I'm stuck. And my mind went back to what I told the guys at West State Prison. I said, being stuck, hallelujah. Sure. Stuck is not an obligation. Yeah, that's right. sure. Stuck is an option. But it's not an obligation. That's right. There's not a person to look right there. You don't have to stay stuck. Anybody in the building feel stuck? Come on, wave at me. Hallelujah. Y'all all scared to say something now. <laughs> anybody in the building feel like you're stuck? Is there anybody in the building who feel like you're stuck? Yeah. Well, I just want to tell you that stuck is an option, but it's not an obligation. You don't have to stay there. But that's going to take some. It's going to take some doing. It's going to take some refocusing. It's going to take some, uh, some, some moving away from some things. It's going to take some replanning. It's going to take some repositioning. It's going to take some things that, that, that is extremely uncomfortable for the moment. All right. In the book of Acts, chapter 28, turn there. Let's go. And we're going to delay no longer. I'm going to get you out of here at a decent time. Hallelujah. I promise you. I promise y'all I'm going to stop when I'm finished. All right. Hallelujah. I'm planning on having you out of here pretty quickly. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I was, uh, I was rejoicing over the fact I was I was looking on Facebook. Hallelujah. And I saw the brother we've been praying for. Look like he's making some good progress. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, uh, I saw a post that said, hallelujah, he's doing so good. He don't even want to eat hospital food. All right. Sister had to take him some soul food up there. He's doing all right. If he, if he wants some cornbread, collard greens, he's he doing all right. Amen. When you get to the book of Acts, chapter 28, which is the last chapter in the book of Acts, Acts 28, incidentally, your life is the 29th chapter. All right. Come on now. Because <laughs> there's no conclusion to the book of Acts. That's right. Because the Bible says what, what, what Jesus began to do, hallelujah, what Jesus began is going to be fully consummated in us. Yes. Come on, say, you got your part to play. Look at somebody and tell them, you got your part to play in this. Hallelujah. But here we see, uh, let's see, hallelujah. Um, yeah, hallelujah. When he when when when, when Paul and, and, and had some guys on the ship that they were they were heading to a, the island of Melita, hallelujah. They they, they escaped this island and they and, and they well matter of fact the ship had the ship had just come ashore. Uh, they looked like they was gonna die at sea. Sometimes you're in a situation that looks like you're gonna look like you're gonna end just like that. Sometimes we find ourselves in situations that looks like it's not going to change. Sometimes we all find ourselves in situations and we begin to, we begin to lift our heads and say, Lord, is it going to end like this? Yeah. Sometimes you find yourself in situations, sometimes it looks like the harder you pray, the harder it gets. Yes, Lord. I mean, you know, sometimes when you start praying, sometimes in the initial stages, look at the babies, in the initial stages of prayer, sometimes the situation gets worse. Yes. Are you listening to me? Yes. Sometimes when you start praying about things, it gets worse. Yeah. Look like look like your prayer just turned it on its head, but that's that's always part of the equation. I need you to understand that. Hallelujah. When you go back, when you go back into the 27th chapter, you see where Paul and, and he was on the ship, they were headed to they were headed to Rome. Paul was took a boat to head to Rome because the Spirit of the Lord had told him that he was going to stand before Caesar. Let me tell you something. When God has told you some things are going to happen in your life. It, it, this is what I'm, I want you to see this. When God makes known his will in your life, the enemy is going to do everything he can to stop that from happening. I told you this, if y'all remember this, I told you that the greater the clarity comes, the more intense the attack becomes. Yeah. There's some things the devil don't know until you tell him. I know y'all don't believe it. We Come give on. the devil too much credit. There's some stuff the devil don't know. Come on, man. But whenever we begin to talk, whenever we begin to declare some things, this is why you have to be careful what you open your mouth up and say. We have to declare things. I'm going to say it like this. This is going to be a little strange, but I'm going to see if y'all can catch it. Sometimes you got to declare things without declaring things. Sometimes you got to say it in a way, it, in a way that the enemy doesn't immediately grasp it. Hallelujah. This is why our Lord used parables. Because parabolic language, hallelujah, language of hyperbole, language of symbolism is a way of conveying truth without the uninitiated ear to understand it. 
those that don't have spiritual discernment, sometimes when you start speaking things by the spirit, people who don't have discernment will think you have fell off your rock. Right. Oh, she crazy. Mm -hmm. I don't see none of that, you know. But you but you're not speaking according to human reasoning. Yeah. You're speaking by the spirit. Yeah. And sometimes when you speak things, listen to me, things that are spoken by the spirit must also be heard by the spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Because we cannot use human reasoning to interpret divine intention. Yeah. Yeah. It's called revelatory, revelation. There are two kinds, let me, just, let, me just, let me lay this on you real quick. There are two kinds of knowledge. There is sense knowledge, but then there's revelation knowledge. Yeah. Sense knowledge is knowledge that you come to, you know, you, you stir, you study, you know, you, you go through an experiment, you know, you, you, you test things, hallelujah, and there's certain conclusions you expect because you've gone through certain experiences and certain things, you know, like a laboratory experiment, y'all listening to me? Yeah. And when you get to the conclusion of that, now you got sense knowledge that tells you that when I add A to B, it's going to equal C. Right. But revelation knowledge sometimes works different because revelation sometimes says, Hallelujah. One plus three is five. Uh, oh, this is it. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And Revelation on one plus three is not always four. That's right. Sometimes, hallelujah. hallelujah. In, Re in Revelation knowledge, one plus one equals one. Uh, now, in sensitive perception, one plus one is two. But Revelation says one plus one equals one. That's crazy, isn't it? So we can't, we can't use sometimes God will speak beyond our capacity to understand. Now, say, that, say this. The Lord had already told Paul that he was going to stand, hallelujah, before Caesar. He was going to be, he was going to go to Rome and he was going to stand before Caesar, glory to God. And they took out, they, 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 they uh, boarded a ship, hallelujah. And the spirit of the Lord had already told Paul before the ship even left the dock. Sometimes God will tell you things before you leave home. That's right. Sometimes God will begin to communicate. He'll begin to give you promptings. Come on, anybody that had those scratchy feelings inside? Hallelujah. You get that uneasy feeling inside that something ain't just, just right? And I'm only one to get that sometimes? Hallelujah. Sometimes God will begin to lean on you, and he'll begin to tell you, don't do this. Hallelujah. I can't tell you the number of times when I used to drive from Quest Laboratories. I used to go around and pick up specimens. Hallelujah. And I would drive all the way from Waycross. I would go to Statesboro, to leave Statesboro, go to Savannah. Hallelujah. Come back to Hinesville, go back up to Claxton. Then come back down. I mean, it was about 300 miles every day that I was driving. So I was driving about 1,500 miles a week. And there were times when I would leave Statesboro and go, to go down I-16, you know, go to Savannah. And I've had this, I've had these prompts on the inside. They said, don't go that way today. My Lord. But Lord, it's quick. Yeah. He said, don't go that way today. I said, well, Lord, if I go to Henderson, I can, I can avoid a lot of these small towns. He said, don't go that way today. My God. Yeah. Right. And there was a time when I, thank God I obeyed the Spirit, didn't go that way. Come to find there was a multi-vehicle pileup mm -hmm. on, on Interstate 16. It took hours to clear up the wreck. Mm -hmm. If I had gone that way, I, I might have been right in the midst of that. Yeah. Wow. Hallelujah. God will save your life if you learn, if you learn to listen to him. Yeah. He'll save you a lot of trouble. Listen to me. God will save us a lot of trouble. See, I can, I can see the road, but I can't see what's up the road. Up the road. Right. But God knows what's happening before it happens. Hallelujah. Yeah. And there are times when he said, go this way today. I've had it happen many times. Yeah. Yeah. You know, without explanation. Watch this. Without explanation. I just, he just said, don't go that way today. That's yeah. right. Anybody ever had that happen? Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. We have to learn to listen to those promises. Anyway, when you get to Acts 27... Hallelujah. Look at verse 10. I'm, I'm trying to bring up the way I want to take it now. Hallelujah. Verse 10, Paul said to them, sirs, I perceive. Uh -huh. Say perceive. perceive. That's another way of saying revelation has been given to me. God spoke to me. I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only to the not only of the lady or the cargo, but all but in the ship, but also of our lives. Yeah. The Lord had already told Paul that if, that if this ship leaves this dock today, there's great danger ahead. Mm -hmm. But the problem is he was talking to a ship captain, hallelujah, who was blinded by his own experience. Yeah. Right. I've been sailing these water for years. Uh, I know all about this ship. I, I'm a, I've been, hallelujah, I've been sailing. Well, I had, I had a man tell me one day, I've been doing this job longer than you are old. 
Hey, one supervisor tell me, I used to work at Chaffee Firewood out here. Hey, one supervisor tell me, well, I'm in charge. Uh -huh. And I quickly said, just because you're in charge don't mean you know what you're doing. That's right. uh -huh. If you were really in charge, you would learn to respect yeah. the people, the opinion of the people who are working under you, who've been on the job longer than you. That's right. Just because, there's, I mean, there's, there's, there's a difference between being in charge and being in control. Yeah. I come to tell you that everybody in charge ain't in control. That's right. Are you listening to me? Amen. Everybody that's in charge is not in control. Uh -huh. Lord, I wish y'all could see how some of y'all looking right now. Hi. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to keep on driving. Now, yes. Hallelujah. So I say amen. amen. But the man, what we know, we know from, as you continue to read, we know that the ship captain did not listen to Paul. Right. It, we, we going in the house. Say in the house. Yeah. But what I love about it, glory to God, even though they went in the house, it happened just like Paul said it was going to happen. Hallelujah. Because there was a nor'easter. Hallelujah. A wind when the ship got out there on that water. There was a nor'easter called Yerachadon. Hallelujah. You see that in verse 14. A tempestuous wind began to blow. Sometimes when you, when you start, whenever you start the voyage, whenever you start the voyage called the, on the way to destiny, sometimes the wind start blowing. Yep. And many times we're going to experience contrary winds. Say contrary wind. Contrary. That means things that begin to work against you. Yes. Sometimes when you start, you know, you sit on at the dinner table, you got your books out, you know, you, you got your checkbook out, you got your calculator out, you laid your bills out. All of a sudden you're trying to see, well, on the 15th I'm going to pay this. And on the 25th I'm going to do that. Hallelujah. Sometimes you got your plan laid out, but sometimes things, sometimes the wind can blow. Yes. Yes. And sometimes the wind can blow, hallelujah, and <laughs> blow your plan right off the table. Sometimes you run out, as he heard me say, you run out of money before you run out of money. Yeah. Hallelujah. Sometimes you got to rape Peter to pay Paul. I didn't say raw Peter, I said rape. Sometimes you got to rape Peter to pay Paul. Hallelujah. I'm just, I'm just trying to get y'all to see something here. Yeah? Hallelujah. But, 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 hallelujah. There was a, I love this, hallelujah. This, this, this wind blew, and when the ship was caught, couldn't bear the wind, hallelujah. They had to just let it go. They had to just drop the sail and just let the wind take it. We just got at a certain point. We just got to go wherever the wind blows. Oh, yeah. We just have to. We have to turn loose. Right. At a certain point, us and we look at the family. Sometimes you do all you know how to do. You you get none of your plans working. Sometimes you just got to drop your sail and say, Lord, I'm in your hands. Yeah. Yeah. Lord, I give this over to you. Yeah. Hallelujah. And that's hard to do. I said, that's hard to do. Yeah. It's hard to get, listen to me, it's hard, it's difficult to get to a place where you've got to operate in complete faith. Yes. Yeah. That's hard. Because the Bible says, when they, whenever, watch this, whenever, whenever they were out there, it was just all of a sudden, even the, all of a sudden, even the, the, the storm was so bad, Queen, the, the clouds were so thick that even the light disappeared. Yeah. They were out there in total dark. Anybody ever been in pitch black dark? Yeah. They were out there in total darkness, hallelujah. When you go down, I'm just trying to work it down to 28. Hallelujah. They got down, the Bible says in verse 20, Acts 27, 20, when neither sun or stars in many days. We didn't see the sun, the moon, or the stars in many days. That means it was pitch black dark. Hallelujah. Everybody said, y'all know what? We should have listened to Paul. Sometimes you get out there and you think of things, I wish I'd have listened to mama. Right. Yeah. I wish I'd have heard what daddy tried to say. Yeah. My sister tried to tell me that. Yeah. I wish I'd have heard what bro was saying. Hallelujah. Sometimes these are the things we say when you get talk. Yeah. I should have listened. I should have listened. Hallelujah. Yeah. But you know, trouble, sometimes we have to go through things because you heard me say that nobody get offended at this. I'm just going to tell you. Sometimes trouble is how God has to educate fools. Yeah. Yeah. When you don't listen to counsel. That's right. Come on. When we don't listen to the words of wise counsel, God has to allow us to go through things. Because a storm, a, 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 an intense trial, has a way of leaving an indelible impression on your soul. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Love this. When Paul, Paul jumped up and said in 21, after long abstinence. After long abstinence. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, y'all should have listened to me. I tried to tell you, we should have stayed at Crete. Hallelujah. And if, if y'all had, if, if you had, if you'd have just listened, 
Paul said, I would have just listened. If, if you would just listen to me, we wouldn't be suffering this harm and this loss. My Lord. But here's what I love about it. God will never leave you like that. Look at verse 22. He says, but never, he said, but now I exhort you to be of what? Good cheer. Hallelujah. For there shall be no what? Loss of any man's life among you. But now we're going to lose the ship. Because every time you take a wrong direction, you're going to lose something. That's right. Ooh. God will spare you. But you're going to lose something along the way. Because there are consequences to disobedience. Thank God he spares us. But in the midst of consequences of disobedience, there is a self, there, there's a loss that's going to occur. Yeah. Right. We're going to lose ground. We're going to lose some time. But what I love about God, hallelujah, that in the next season, God, he will, he'll even make that up to you. Because yeah, the devil really wanted to kill Paul. He wanted Paul. I'm going to show you. I'm showing you a minute. He wanted Paul to die. Hallelujah. And let me just kind of fast forward this because I'm going to run out of time if I don't move on. Hallelujah. But this kind of presses fast forward. Hallelujah. The, the, the ship did have a shipwreck. Hallelujah. And it was about 276 men on board. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And the ship, the shipwreck, and the, well, yeah, 203 score of 60, 276 people, that's verse 37, were on board. Hallelujah. Which means it was a large ship. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. The ship hit, hit a sandbar and broke up. Say the ship broke up. The ship broke up in pieces, hallelujah, and part the ones that could swim, they swam the shore, and the ones that could not swim, they had to get on board with pieces of the broken ship. Mm -hmm. Say, coming in on broken pieces. Amen. Hallelujah. You're going to come, you won't make it, but you may have to come in on some broken pieces. Hallelujah. I remember teaching that one time, hallelujah, coming in on broken pieces, but they made it. Now we are 28, they, are this, they, they, they came ashore on an island called Melita. Say Melita. Hallelujah. And when they came, I'm in verse 28, I'm in chapter 28, verse 1. And when they were escaped, they knew that they, they, uh, they, they knew that the island was called Melita. And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness. Which means these people, you know, we just, we just, we survived the shipwreck. We made it to shore. We made it to this island. Only to come, only to meet people who were not friendly. Mm -hmm. All the stuff that you just went through, watch this. You just came through one, one of the most tumultuous times and seasons in your life. And sometimes after you've gone through all that hurt and all that harm and all that potential loss of life, sometimes you still encounter people who ain't friendly towards you. Mm -hmm. They showed us no little kind. For they came to the fire and received us, everyone, because of the present rain. We need to move on. And a cold. Look at verse 3. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper, says snake. snake. There came a snake out of the heat and fastened onto his hand. Mm How -hmm. I many of you know this? And, and we'll see as we read on down in here. I'm not going to read the whole thing because I want you to do it. I want to get to this thought. But this was one of the most venomous snakes of that region. These people have seen this snake. Hallelujah. They were familiar. Say for me. These people were familiar with this snake. And they all they also knew that nobody who was bitten by this kind of snake survived. They realized that this snake, that this snake, this particular venom of this snake was so potent. And it didn't take long. If he bit you, you were done. And it didn't take long. And then it, it would take but a few minutes, and the area where the snake bit you would swell up. Hallelujah. And, 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 it, and it would attack. That venom would go throughout your blood, and it would begin to attack your nervous system. And you start having seizures. Hallelujah. You start having grand mal seizures like someone with epilepsy, and it won't be long before you die. So when they saw that snake on Paul's hand, they say, oh, the sea didn't get him, but that snake did. Right. This man, God must be, God must be after this man. Hallelujah. Because even though he escaped the shipwreck, God still ain't going to let him live. Yep. Watch this, man. Because there's some folks y'all don't believe it, but there's some people standing around you right now waiting on your demise. Yes. They want you to go down. Go down. They don't think everybody around you smiling this for you. Some, some folks are waiting on that snake that attaches up to your hand. 
and watch you go down. Hallelujah. And he made this for me. I'll give him a few more days. He ain't going to last. I remember when I first got saved, 40, almost 42 years ago, I first came to, I was telling my friends, the queen, when I got saved, when I came to the Lord, I lost all my friends. In the last one, I'm telling you, they went their way. Because they weren't ready for the, they weren't ready to serve the God I serve. I began to witness to them, and then I wanted to hear that man. He used to be right out here with us. I said, that's why I, got, that's why I could talk to you, because I used to be right out here with you. Hallelujah. And every one of them went their way. And then one of them, the word got back to me, said, I gave him two weeks. Yeah. Bill, Bill ain't going to stay with that because he like to get high too much. Yeah. Y'all ain't going to help me. That's right. Because I love proud of myself, proud of my deliverance. I love to get high. And I love to drink my son. I love to blow the, I, I love to blow, blow, to blow the frost off of a couple. Y'all ain't going to get that. Yeah. I, love, I love my son. It's going to get me a cold. Yeah. That's, kind of, that's where I was. Amen. So they said, I'll give two weeks. He ain't going to last. Two weeks last, and they still they said, wait a minute. This boy might be serious. Something may have really gotten a hold of him. All of a sudden, two months passed. I'm still, they still can't find him in the streets. All of a sudden, a whole year passed, and I'm still in the church. Wait, 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 hold, wait a minute. Hallelujah. What they realized, glory to God, is that God spared me from the snake bite. Hallelujah. Now, in the middle of the week, middle of last week, not about Tuesday or about Wednesday, Wednesday of last week, the Lord began to put a different spin on this for me. Hallelujah. And I took my note. I start, I start typing some stuff. He began to kind of, he began to kind of put a spin on me on, on this for me, particularly these first six verses. Let me read down to verse six. Hallelujah. Look at verse. Uh, I, I read verse three. Now go to verse four. Verse four says, "But when the and when the barbarians." All these people barbarians. When the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said, "To who?" See, they ain't talking to you; they're talking among themselves. They're not talking about you to you. They're talking about you among themselves. What they say? They said, "Watch this." They said among themselves, "No doubt, this man is a murderer." Why? Whom he whom. Though he has escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffers not to live. In other words, judgment still going to get him. Because we never see nobody survive that snake bite. My Lord. Look at verse 5. Verse 5 says that he, as Paul, shook off the beast. Yes. Shook him off where? He shook that snake off into the fire. Woo. Hallelujah. And felt no harm. No <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 6 says, but oh, how be it they look when he should have swollen. He didn't even swell up. Watch this. There were, watch this. There were no signs. I want y'all to get this. Huh? Paul didn't even have any sign that a snake had bit him. I'm telling you, God can break you out so well that, that you won't even look like what you've been through. I don't care what you've gone through in life. I don't care what has happened to you. God's deliverance is so complete that there won't be no fallout from it. You won't even look like what you just come through. Yeah. Hallelujah. Lord. The scripture says when it, hallelujah, it looked, when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly, but after eight, about what says, but after they looked a great while and saw no harm, they looked how long? A great, great while. They looked a great while. Come on now. Then it may take a little while for it to get in. Yeah. Because you didn't take that long. Well, they've seen this, of course, they've seen this before. Yeah. Yeah. Say the same, but not like this. Not like this. Come on, say, they've seen it before, yeah. but not like this. Not like I want to talk about that in the register. They've seen this before. Yeah. They've seen people say, I love the Lord. He heard my cry yeah. and pitied every wrong. Yeah. They've seen people who testified on the mountain, but if you keep looking a while, you see them in the valley. You see them in the they, 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 they talk and they live in them. But there's something different about this fellow, yeah. hallelujah. Because after we looked a great while, hallelujah, they saw no harm coming. No harm. They, they, they saw no after effects. Yeah. What they saw was real deliverance. Yeah. Is there anybody in the house looking for a real deliverance? Yeah. Looking for, I'm talking about looking for, not, not just something somebody talking about, but I'm talking about a real, measurable, discernible, hallelujah. Hallelujah. No doubt that God is up to something here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking for some discernible evidence. Hallelujah. 
Glory be to God. And the scripture says they changed their mind. Uh -huh. Watch this. God's about to do this. this is what he told me this week. I'm going to try to get a hold of this. Yeah. The Lord says I'm about to do a thing and do beginning fellowship that's going to make folks change their mind. Right. There's some people have said things. Listen to me. I, I can hear it. I can hear the chatter. I hear it in my spirit. Some of you, if you're really moving in the spirit, you can hear things. Yeah. You know things. There are people that are waiting for this to go down. Yeah. It ain't going to last. As a matter of fact, in the mouth and in the minds of many people, we weren't supposed to be here this long. Yes. In the mouths of many people. But, but, but here's the thing. I don't want you to get in your mind that we got this show. We're going to show them. We're not going to operate in a show them in town. That's too much pressure. Hallelujah. Yeah. I ain't trying to prove nothing to anybody. All I want to do is be faithful to the mandate that God has given us. Hallelujah. Because anytime you operate trying to show somebody something, you set yourself up for failure. Don't try to prove yourself. Just be yourself. Hallelujah. Just be who God has called you to be. Glory to God. And he'll see to the results. Is anybody listening to me? Hallelujah. The scripture says, they look for a while. Hallelujah. Paul just shook that snake off. Hallelujah. And kept on building the fire. Hallelujah. I want to talk to somebody this morning from a subject. Build the fire and destroy the snake. That's what Paul said. He says, if you build the fire, I'll destroy the snake. Hallelujah. I just want somebody who just, just be busy. Come on, family. Hallelujah. Get you, get you a bunch of sticks. That's like I got them. Hallelujah. Get you some sticks together and let's all build a fire. Hallelujah. And I guarantee you, when you see what happens is this. When you start building a fire, glory to God, if there's a snake present, he's going to make himself known. Yes, sir. Come on, say a real fire. We're going to draw the snake out. You know, you know why? You know why? I know this is going to sound a little rough. But you know why? You can't really see the snakes in some places because there's no fire building. Uh -oh. Ain't no fire in there. Ain't no fire there. Ain't no fire there. Ain't no fire there. So the snake ain't threatened. That's right. Ain't threatened. But when there's a real fire, I'm going to talk to you about this fire because there's something the Holy Ghost is, there's something, he, there's something he's, he, he, he's impressing here this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There's some spiritual events. There's some spiritual activity. When I, when I mean when I say build the fire, you know, the Bible says our God is a consuming fire. Hallelujah. Say fire. fire. You know, when the Bible says when the Pentecost, when the dead Pentecost came, there was an appearance of fire. How many know the Bible says when the children of Israel were sojourning through the wilderness, there was an appearance of a pillar of fire. Hallelujah. There were many times when Moses went up, went up on Mount Hallelujah up on Mount Sinai to receive the Decalogue. When he went up on Sinai to receive the Ten Commandments, hallelujah. Glory to God, before he, before he went up, hallelujah. There was a great sign that Moses saw on the side of that mountain. There was a great sight that Moses saw on the side of that mountain. And the sight that he saw, he saw a bush that was on fire, but it wasn't being consumed. It was on fire, but it wasn't burning up. Hallelujah. You ever seen something on fire, but not burning up? Hallelujah. Moses hadn't seen it either. Moses, I got, to, I got to turn around and go look at this, because I ain't never seen nothing like this before. Anybody ready to see something they never seen? Yeah. Hallelujah. He said, I see a bush on fire, but it ain't burning up. Hallelujah. Look like it ought to be gone by now. Yeah. Hallelujah. But no doubt, hallelujah. no doubt, one day he might have saw it, you know, and then come back the next day and it's still on fire. Come back the next day and it's still burning. Because I need you to understand that in the desert there was nothing strange about bushes catching on fire. Or the one thing I want you to realize, and I, and I learned this working in hay, I didn't know this, but there is a such thing as spontaneous combustion. Yeah. Well, I didn't know that until I worked in hay, hallelujah. That, that hey, hallelujah, this is why you want to get it before you want to get it while it's dry. Go ahead and go ahead and bail it, get it in the barn. Because there's something about hay when, it's, when it gets damp, if you bail it while it's damp, I don't know what causes it, but if you bail it while it's wet, see that, hey, it's real compact, it's compact, yeah. hallelujah. And, and, and if you're not careful, there's a thing, I don't know how, I'm asking how it happened, but I've seen it happen, it's called spontaneous combustion. It can't try so in the, in, in, hallelujah, in the wilderness, which was the desert, there was nothing strange about seeing bushes catch fire. Mm -hmm. No doubt, again, listen to this. No doubt Moses saw that bush burning. Okay, I, I've seen that before. Mm -hmm. He come in the next day, the bush burning. Ooh, that's kind of strange. I, it used to be burned up by right now. But after a few days, huh. after a great time. Yeah. Oh. Great time. Yeah. After a great while, they know. Yeah. 
We just want to shake the stick off your evil ass. Uh -huh. But that's going to break wild. Yeah. Yeah. See, 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 Moses, well, listen to me. Moses didn't draw in the bush on day one. No. Y'all not catching this. Come on. Yeah. When you read the Bible, I want you to be sensitive of these things. I want you to understand the setting because it's the setting of the desert. And there was nothing strange about bushes catching on fire. But there is something strange about bushes catching on fire and they burn it up. Right. Oh. Right. Right. Yes. And you come by around the fifth or sixth day. And that same bush still burning? Yeah. And, and, and none of the, watch this, it's burning just as bright, but there's none of the leaves, none of the branches are being consumed. Probably one day Moses passed by, you know what? I got to turn us, I got to take a closer look at this. Yeah. But there's something strange going on here. Mm. Is there anybody in the house who can really, can, can, can really relate to me yeah. and understand that there's something strange yeah. happening in this world right yeah. now? Yeah. There's some, there's some unusual things happening. We, you know, we live in a world we used to seeing certain things. We used to yes. seeing something. But there's something about this season that's a little, that's a little odd. Yes. There's something about things that are happening, things that uh, things that are happening in our day that's a little, little, little bit outside of the norm. Yes. There, there, there's some things happening in the realm of the spirit that's off. Mm -hmm. There's something, hallelujah, that God wants us to turn aside and look at. Look at, that's right. There's, and, hallelujah. That's and God right. is trying to help us understand that there's really a stake in the midst, but he can't be revealed until we build a fire. We've got to get a fire built. Yeah. Because if you get the right kind of fire right. built, the stake got to show himself. Ooh, show himself. Yeah. And then when he shows himself, we can shake him off in that fire. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Now, the reason why they were building the fire, this is the natural. Hallelujah. It was cold. They had just come out of the sea. They were soaking wet, right? They were cold and they were wet. Yes. Glory to God. So in the natural, we're going to build a fire so we can warm ourselves. Hallelujah. Again, Paul and the others, they were, they were cold. Thank you, Holy Ghost. They were cold and wet. Hallelujah. After the shipwreck, there are people that's going to come to the house of God. Hallelujah. Fresh out of a shipwreck. That's right. That's right. Come on. Now, did you hear me about the Holy Ghost? Hallelujah. There are people going to come in our midst. Hallelujah. Right. That have come all kind of home wreck situations. Right. Hallelujah. The ship been wrecked on their job. Right. They got shipwrecks of relationships. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory be to God. They got shipwrecks. Hallelujah. You got relationship shipwrecks. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Somebody said, joking with hallelujah. There ain't no shipwreck like a relationship wreck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. There are no, there, there are no shipwreck like a partnership ring. That's right. somebody, somebody said that the only ship that really won't sail right is a partnership. My God. You got to be careful who you get in partnership with. Hallelujah. So, so, so I want you to hear this by the Holy, hear me by the Holy Ghost when I relay these things to you. Hallelujah. Because there's a deeper message here. Hallelujah. They were cold. We got people who are cold. Hallelujah. People, people's lives are cold because of the after effects of sin. Sin will promise you warmth, but it can't deliver. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Cold and wet. Hallelujah. Just like physical fire provides warmth, I need you to understand that spiritual fire represents our zeal and our passion for God. Listen to me. The more zealous, the more we become zealous and passionate about the things of God, the more the stake is going to reveal. That's right. Yeah. So now, now you don't to hear this now. Amen. Hallelujah. Now let's get the application because I got you got your notes. I want you to read these notes now because this, this is some good stuff in here. Hallelujah. So the application is simply this. We got that all of us, it's everybody's responsibility to build a fire. Notice this. Whenever they came, when they came ashore, the people of the island built the fire. Yeah. But at a certain point, Paul had to gather his own sticks. I want y'all to see the application there. Paul said, you're responsible, you're responsible for gathering your sticks. Now, we're going to have a corporate fire here, but I need you to bring your sticks. Oh, I need you to bring your sticks, too, now. Because at a certain point, you can't warm yourself by a fire that I feel. Yeah. You got to contribute your own, everybody got have their own kindling. Yeah. I need you to bring your fat line. That's right. Bring your so talk about. Right. You got to bring your own splinter. Talk to me. You got to bring, you got to come on. You got to gather your own sticks. Bring it. Bring it. In other words, you got to have your own experience. Yeah. Glory to God. You got to gather bring your own stuff. You got to bring your unique situation. Yeah. Right. We got a community of fire burning, yeah. but you got to bring your own oh. unique fire. Your own unique yeah. 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 Yeah.
Jesus. Come on. Bring it to the fire. Yeah. Come on. I said, bring it on. We let the fire burn. Come on. Glory to God. The Bible says there's no wood in the fire. That means we're all responsible for keeping the fire going. That's right. That's right. If I had time, I would take you back to Leviticus. And I know we're not going to do it, but hallelujah. But in the book of Leviticus, the priests, one of their main jobs was to keep the fire burning. They had to keep the witch trimmed. They had to keep the fire burning. There was something that was never was never supposed to go out. Hallelujah. God said, I want to keep a fire burning in the house. Because eventually you're going to have people that are coming fresh off the street. Right. You're going to have people that are coming fresh and shipwrecked. Yeah. They got shipwrecked lives. Ooh. They got shipwrecked homes. They got shipwrecked relationships. Yeah. They got shipwrecked marriages. Yeah. They got shipwrecked children. Right. They're going to come to the house. Right. And they're going to come wet. And they're going to come right. cold. Right. And we're going to bring them come on to the fire. Right. Lord God. Because after a while, they're going to gather around the fire. Right. And eventually, they're going to gather their own sticks. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. That's good. Good. Come on, say, build the fire. Build the fire. So we can get rid of the sticks. Yes. Yes. Building the fire means we got to nurture our relationship with yes. God. We got to stay spiritually warm. But come on, some of y'all, come on, the enemy trying to make some of you cold. Yes. We can't get cold in our relationship. Don't right. let it get cold. Don't let it get yes. cold. The Bible says maintain the fervency. Yes. Fervency means fire. Yes. Somebody shout fire. Yes. God 
us need. That's God. That's our cover. See, we're covered. Hallelujah. It's wood because wood, the Bible says God was in Christ. Jesus was wood, but Christ was gold. Are y'all listening to me? Yeah. So God said, bring your wood. Bring your wood. Throw it in the fire. Bring your wood. So Paul gathered his wood. That's what, that's, what, that's what verse 3 back in the previous chapter says. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks, no doubt, Sister Gilda, some of those sticks were pieces of that broken ship. Y'all yeah. right. ain't hearing yeah. yeah. that. You don't hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Some of the sticks that Paul gathered was pieces of the broken ship. I know. The stuff that, that's right. No doubt, the people that watch this, the wood that we gather are pieces of our broken life. Yes. Yeah. Wood speaks of humanity. Yeah. All of us got areas of brokenness. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all don't understand what I'm saying, man. When I come to church, I come every Sunday with all little sticks. Because yeah. 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 I'm still bringing pieces. I'm still bringing pieces. Yes, I'm coming. And I'm throwing them in the fire. Right. That, means, that, watch this. that means I'm surrendering. Yes, yes, the fire speaks of God's process. Yes. The fire speaks of God's process. God has a process. Yes. And God has a purpose. And God's purpose is on fire. Yes. I said God's purpose is on fire. Yes. So if I want to get it, that's right. Fire is a purifying agent. Yes. Fire is a scrutinizing agent. You want to find out how pure something is, put it in the fire. Yes. Gold, when it's mine, gold is not mine in its pure form. Before gold can be purified, it has to be subjected to the fire. God saved you, then he put you in the fire. Now you're beginning to understand why Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had to go in the fire. I said they had to go. They had to go in the fire. Hallelujah. Their lives were sticks that had to go into the fire of God's process. And the fire of my broken humanity became the goal of praise. But it happens in the fire. Is it beginning to click to you? Is it beginning to make sense? We got to build a fire. Every Sunday when we come together, we got to build a fire. I know well, Pastor Tom, I'm, I'm quiet by nature. I don't, I don't shout much. But open your mouth and say something. Come on. You know, I, you know I, I'm not a saint. I make a difference. You got a mouth, open your mouth. Yeah. Uh, you know, I can't sing that good. As far as God concerned, He wants to hear your voice. Yeah. Open your mouth and hallelujah, spit out a tune, hallelujah. Open your mouth and hum, do something, hallelujah. We got that, 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 there's something that can come out of you, glory to God. Amen. There is no such thing as a silent praise. I just praise God in my mind. That's impossible. Are y'all still in here? Yeah. I can't sing like Queen. He didn't ask you to. He wants you to sing like you do. Hallelujah. You, you, you can't sing like her because you don't have her praise. But you got yours. That's why I always, I always say some of y'all got a hallelujah he ain't heard yet. Because you're so busy trying to sound like somebody else. I think I did a response in my sister's post. Hallelujah. Anytime you try to act like somebody else, you're robbing, them, you're robbing the world of something precious. You. God will never look at you, Pastor. God will never anoint you to act like somebody else. Anytime you're trying to be like somebody else, the anointing ain't going to work in your life. Because you become an imitator. Excuse me, you become an imposter. But if you'll just be yourself, Sister Sonia, just be you. Because that's what we need. I need you. I don't need you trying to act like her. I need you to be yourself. Hallelujah. We're going to build this fire. We're going to continue to build a fire. So now we're talking about providing warm and comfort. We're also talking about the role of community because it's not just, listen to me, family, look at me. It's not just one person's responsibility to build a fire. It's all of our responsibility. Yeah. We're talking about a community. Listen to this. When they came ashore, watch what the book says. It says they killed yeah. the fire. Yeah. The whole community got together. They recognized, let me tell you something, we got to recognize the cold and wet and depleted condition of the community that we live in. Black Share is a cold, wet place. Y'all ain't hear me yet. All right now. It's cold and wet in Pierce County. Uh -huh. I hear what I'm it's saying. Okay. Yeah. Wake Cross is a cold city. Yeah. Yeah. If, you, if, you, if, if you think I'm speaking in terms of Fahrenheit and Celsius, you're going to miss this. That's right. oh. 
We got cold that's all around us. We got people who are cold. Folks go to church every Sunday, but they go in cold and they come out cold. Because they go in and they don't fire people. You go in a post shop, get that issue, yeah, come over here. Yeah. You go in a place where there's no fire pit. The same snake that slithered in there with you will also slither right back out with you. Because he can't come out unless the fire is right. Yeah. The snake can't be, listen to me, the snake cannot be revealed unless the fire is right in the house. Hallelujah. So I want you to understand what your queen, what queen be doing. What, 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 what lady do? Y'all call the first lady, I call the last lady. Hallelujah. What she be trying to tell you? Come on, everybody. Let's praise the Lord. Come on. She's trying to get you to throw your sticks in the fire. Yeah. Because if we all throw our sticks in the fire, we're going to have a bigger blaze. Yeah. I said we're going to have a bigger blaze. Yeah. Because the Bible says where there's no fire, where there's no wood, the fire goes out. Yeah. So we're trying to get everybody, because everybody can contribute Amen. to this blaze. Hallelujah. Everybody in this room have their own individual expression. Yeah. Hallelujah. Can't nobody praise God like you praise him. Right. Did, 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 did that register that time? Yeah. Nobody can praise him like you. Because yeah. there's nobody else in the house. That is you. Yeah. Tell us the population that uh, the, the United States, uh, what is the world census, the people that 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 that, that does that, they say it's about eight billion people in the world. Now, that's crazy. That's 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 astronomical. <coughs> eight billion people in the world, but no two people are exactly alike. Right. Eight billion people in the world, but no two people have the same fingerprint. Yeah. Right. Are y'all listening to me? Yeah. Now, if you got the existence of God, how do you explain that? That's, right. That's not this random chance. That's, right. That's divine design. Yes, that means out of all the people that are in this world, there's not another you to be found. Right. Nobody like you has ever passed this way. Yeah. And after you're gone, there'll never be another you. That's it. And you've got the audacity to be jealous of somebody. What's wrong with you? How you gonna be jealous of somebody that you the only you in town? Matter of fact, you the only you in the world. And you jealous of somebody. What is wrong with you? Somebody making you not focus on your wood. Who if I could just sing like Lane? That ain't what God wants you to do. He wants you to sing like you. Who if I could just carry a choir? You know, and I said, I said, I wish I could play like so and so. God said, No, you play like you. Thank you. That's it. Oh, I wish I could do. I wish I could do. People, people, I said, people who say that, Hallelujah, they become preoccupied with what other folks doing. Yeah. Because if you ever, if we ever get occupied, I'm talking about fully. If we ever become fully occupied with what God has called us to do, we'll never utter those words again about I wish I could be what they are. What they are. Because you'd be so busy doing what you're supposed to do that you ain't got time to look at what somebody else is doing. That's right. Are you still in here with me now? Yes. So we talk about the role of community. Everybody plays a part. Everybody got a stack of wood. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The fire was built in a community effort. Hallelujah. Y'all, this emphasizes the importance of fellowship and support within the community. Hallelujah. Hey, family, we need each other. God put you here for a reason. He didn't just put you here to take up a seat and occupy space. There's something God wants every person to have a contribution. Hallelujah. And I, well, all I can do is do a little. Little as much with God is in. Yeah. Hallelujah. So we're talking about providing warmth and comfort that's spiritual. Building a fire. We're talking about the role of the community. That's everybody. Say everybody got a part. We have to always encourage mutual support in the house of God. Yeah. Every person in this room, from old to young, hallelujah, from small to great, every person in this house has a role to play. There's not one unimportant, unnecessary person in this ministry. Are y'all listening to me? Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. We also talk about when we say building a fire, we're going to move on to the Get close to my, to, my, to my conclusion here. We're talking about the necessity of continuous effort. I said the necessity of a continuous effort. 
because y'all know that if a fire is going to keep burning, it requires ongoing attention. You leave a fire to itself, and the water's going to go out. We have to keep putting a, putting a log on there. We got to maintain. Say maintain. I want you to understand that Jesus died to obtain. We have to come and maintain what he has obtained. Hallelujah. Everybody got their part to play. Maintaining a fire requires ongoing effort and support and attention. Hallelujah. Spiritual fire requires daily devotion. Why do you think you have to send that stuff out to you every day? Why do I do it? Because I'm trying to keep a fire burning in Why do I do it? Because I'm trying to keep a wood in your Why do I do it? Because I'm trying to feed your faith and starve your doubt. That's why I do it. I'm trying to keep a fire burning. Hallelujah. Because cause, cause whatever I send you, trust me, I read it first. <laughs> I'm not saying, I ain't trying to get you to eat anything that I ain't eating. Because I need what I send to you. Hallelujah. And also the reason why I said it to you is make sure that we all are putting our wood in the same oven. Amen. Or in the same furnace. Hallelujah. Spiritual fire requires daily devotion. It requires daily prayer. Hallelujah. I know we got a time of prayer set aside in the house, but I hope you ain't waiting. You're not just waiting till Tuesday to pray. Come on. I said, I hope. Amen. I said, I hope you're not waiting for Tuesday. Yeah. I'll be glad with Tuesday because I pray. Prayer is our daily thing. Daily. Prayer is one of those pieces of wood you got. Prayer is one of the wood, is one of the pieces of wood that builds the fire in your Amen. life. Amen. Prayer is a prayer is one of the most significant logs that you have to put on the fire to destroy that snake. Worship is so important. It is so important, and I'm not just talking about Sunday mornings when we come together collectively, but there should be a worship. Going on in your heart daily. You ought to have a song in you all the time. How, somebody say amen. amen. We're talking about emphasizing the importance of daily spiritual disciplines. I've got some disciplines in my life. I'm going to get in the Word. I'm going to pray. I'm going to study my Bible. Because I don't just study just for service. I study for food. I don't wait to, I got to preach, I got to study, now I got to preach. No, I don't study for sermons. I study for life. I study for relationship. I study his words so I can, so I can become more and more familiar with his voice. Hallelujah. I study the word because I want to become more and more discerning of the movement of the spirit. Because I know God sounds just like his word reads. Are you listening to me? When you have trouble hearing God, read God. That's right. Because his voice sounds like his word. Yeah, yeah. Give me a few more minutes. Hallelujah. We got to stay committed. Hallelujah. Yeah. The fire. Say fire. 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 Hallelujah. The Lord told me to tell you, if you can only destroy the stakes in the fire that you build, you can't destroy the stakes in the fire that somebody else built. <laughs> the snake will only be destroyed in your life, hallelujah, in the fire that you build. Yeah. And as we, we all have our individual part to play in the building of the community fire. Hallelujah. Yes, the natives of the land. Yes, the people of Malta built a fire. Hallelujah. But Paul did not recognize the snake until he put his wood on the fire. All right. Sometimes you don't recognize the thing. Listen to me, Pastor. Look up here. Sometimes you don't recognize the things that are plaguing your life until you begin to participate in the fire. Right. Whenever, you, whenever you begin to participate in the fire, yeah. glory to God, yeah. all of a sudden the snakes in your life begin to be drawn out of the flames. And you become face to face with something that you didn't even know you were playing with. Mm -hmm. Lord, where this come from? The reality of it is, family, it's been there the whole time, but the fire had been hard enough to reveal it. That's why snakes can't be seen in a cold atmosphere. That's right. Mm -hmm. got to be hot. It's got to be hot in here. I'm talking about the worst. It's got to be, there has to be something worse that's in the house. That's right. Our relationship, the Bible speaks of our, our relationship with God, it speaks of it as fervent, to be fervent, which means to literally means to be on fire, to be a glow. You know how it is when you're excited about something? Yes. There is no such thing as quiet excitement. Mm -hmm. That's fine, though. Why are you looking like that? Because I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> I tell y'all, I 
I'm so excited about what the Lord is doing. And I thank the goodness of you. And I consider all that he's done for me. My soul cries out. Hallelujah. You call that excitement? Show me the door. I'm out of here. I can't, I can't stay. I, I, I just, I, you know. Hallelujah. When God, when, the, when the, the church was born in fire, the Bible says, cloven tongues of fire sat on everybody's head. Yeah. Everybody had a head. The hell was on fire. Yeah. 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 They were on fire. Yes, sir. They were on fire. Yeah. And you can say what you want to say, but if you ever get on fire, yeah. they're going to sit there. Who is your time? <laughs> you get on some oh it's hot over there <laughs> hallelujah you, 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 when you're in the fight you can't be cute in fight <laughs> it's your head high I tell you I don't feel, I don't feel that fire you, you don't feel it either <laughs> somebody say hallelujah now I know I hear you but I believe you you can't always tell spiritual presence by a lot of jumping and hollering but there is a jump and a shout if it's real. Right. There is. The Bible says, I don't read nowhere when Jesus ever jumped and shout. You don't read everything Jesus did in the Bible. Right. But I can show you people that he touched. They jumped. There was a man who, had, who was laying with his feet. And the Bible says when, 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 when Peter and when they touched him, he went leaping and dancing and praising God. Hallelujah. There won't be an expression somewhere if you ever get a hold of this fire. Or should I say this fire ever get a hold of you? There won't be a change somewhere. Hallelujah. Fire purifies. Uh, purifies. And it transforms materials. Fire transforms materials. Spiritually, God, you have to go in the fire. And then we come to church and put our wood in the fire. Yeah. Hallelujah. Trials, sometimes God even used trials. Why? To enhance the fire in your life. Sometimes God, lets, he lets us go through things because sometimes there's things you, listen to me, I venture to tell you this family, that in every trial, if we, if we approach it right, if we approach it in the, in the realm of the spirit, everything you go through in life, you on the other side, you have something in that fire. There's something that left your life in that fire. Sometimes you're not aware of what it was until sometime later on down the road. But later on down the road, certain when a situation comes up again, all of a sudden now you respond differently. You know why? Because you've grown. You didn't just go through it. You grew through it. Yeah. Say, I grew through that. I grew through that. Say, the stuff, the stuff that, I've been through that I've been through forced me, forced me to grow up. To grow up. Say, I was forced. To grow, to grow up. Say this, I was forced, I was forced to, see to see things. I didn't want to see. Say, I was forced, I was forced to hear things. Hear I didn't want to hear them. Here it is. Say, I was forced, I was forced to know things. To know things. I didn't really want to know. Sometimes we have to see things we don't want to see. That's right. Oh, Painful stuff. Mm -hmm. Pain. Pain! You mean tell me God use pain every day? Every day, all day. Sometimes twice on Sunday. God will use pain. Because pain is one of God's most effective teachings. I can say what you want to say. But pain sometimes, the trials and the things that we go through, Prophet is today. The, those are the that's the setting that turns knowledge into experience. What you know of the word has, it has to become our experience. And there's only one way knowledge becomes experience, and that's through trials. When you go through trials, the thing that you do from the word now becomes workable knowledge. Now I see what I only knew. <laughs> now I know. Because there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a slight difference. Watch I'm going to say. Now I'm gonna, I don't want to do injustice to the table. I don't want you to hear me about the Holy Ghost. There's a, there's a difference between believing a thing and knowing it. Trials. When you go through trials, because it's watch this. Here's what, you, here's what I want you to see. I'm gonna finish this later. Here's what I want you to see. It's not just you going through the trial; it's also your faith. Mm -hmm. 
that's being tried. Sister Gilda, when you go through trials, Minister Solomon, when you go through tests, my sweet dear darling beautiful queen, when you go through tests, my faith graduates into trust. Why do you think the scripture says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't lean? Do you know that scripture actually is in the context of trials? Because you don't need to really trust God. You don't think you do. We don't really see how you need to trust God when everything is fine. But when you're going through trials, when you're going through difficulties, when you're going through stuff that you have no point of reference for, when you're going through things that that picks at your faith, you go through stuff that makes you think God ain't nowhere around. Come on, so I don't talk about it. Because God has left me. I, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm just in this thing by myself. I, I don't know what to do. Talk to me somebody. Yeah. I, don't know, I don't know whether to go left or right. Hallelujah. Every time I look up still, so I can look it down. I just don't know. Hallelujah. I just don't know. Well, you are in a place where faith is about to have a graduation. Your faith is a, watch this. Your faith, you, you don't realize this, but your faith is in grad school. Lord, let me speak. See what I'm trying to show them. Help, help us all to get this, Lord. There's a, there's a, the Bible says we're going from faith to faith. That's talking about levels of progression, as we go. We don't, God wants to stay on the same level for 10 years. That, that, that when you get to a certain place, God wants to be able to trust you with more. There are greater expressions of God. God wants us, He wants us to be able to be trusted with more things. But how can I give you more? When you're constantly failing at this level, I can't take you up now. Oh, we're going up, going up and yonder, and we should be failing over yonder. We're talking about going up yonder, but failing down yonder. So I got to master this level. So today I got there's something God, there's something the Father is demanding of me. I'm closing. I ain't through. I'm just gonna close. There's something the Father is demanding of me on this level, so that He can trust me on this level. Sister Sherry, and I got to keep my wood on the fire. Hallelujah. I'm going to let you go. May your condition work good today. Hallelujah. You're good to me, Lord. You thought like you have been burning up, boy. It's just getting right back. Right Hallelujah. I got to hurry up. Some folks get sleep when they get cool. <laughs> go to sleep on the top of the bubble and turn the air off. <laughs> Listen to me, babies. Bring your wood. Bring your wood. Don't you take that wood back home with you. Bring that wood. And this, one, this is the mindset I want you to, every time we come together in a corporate gathering, yes. I want you to come in the house. It's just, it's just a symbolic gesture. I want you to come in the house like this. All right. <laughs> Good morning, church. God bless you. What are you doing? What, 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 why you got on like that? Oh, you don't see it? You see what? I got my wood. Yeah, I wood, but some of y'all might come in like this. Some of y'all might come in with a real back. But I want you to this is just a symbolic gesture. I want you to come in like this. Matter of fact, put her left arm, put that right hand up. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. I come and bring my wood. And whenever the time, whenever the, whenever the worship, whenever the call of worship is made. Whenever the call with the queen of whoever's going to say, come on, everybody, let's lift, let's lift our voice. I want you to start. Grab a piece, grab a, grab a kindling, fling it in the fire. Grab a piece, fling it in the fire. And when you grab your last piece, take that hand and put that one up with it. Because I put all my wood on the fire. When you come back next Sunday, bring some more. You got some food, you got some more logs in the house. I promise you, you do. If you don't think, you don't think you do, you're going to find some more wood before next Sunday. Right. Sometimes you got to bring your children the wood with you. Talk to me, somebody. I want you to, I want you to see what I'm saying. Why? Because we're trying to get rid of a snake. We've got to get this fire hard enough so that viper will come out of there. You'd be surprised at the love. Listen to me. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I hate you. He said, there's a fire of love that prevails among us that'll cause a snake to leave. Yeah. If we really walk
walk in love like we're supposed to. Yeah. If we really love one another yeah. and stop back, back, snapping and whispering in the background about each other. That ain't happening in here, is it? I don't know what I'm talking about glasses now. Ain't nobody here like that. But if we walk in love, love is one of the greatest five things you can be. It's the, it's the five. And, I, and I look over those numbers. Did y'all get those numbers? Go look and read those numbers. I talked about the fire of faith, the fire of fellowship, the fire of fervency, the fire of faithfulness. Hallelujah. I got a few more F words I'm going to put in there. Hallelujah. I got some more synonyms I'm going to give because it's going to be good and we're going to all operate on the same level. It's called agreement. Brand new word. Heads are bowed right now. I want to thank all of our Facebook audience. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we thank God for our Facebook Live audience. Facebook Live, continue to bring your wood. The Lord says if you build a fire, you'll destroy the snake. Hallelujah. Thank y'all for joining in with us today. And we with us next week at the same time. Let's give our Facebook audience one more.